good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Exciting, uh, exciting purchase here. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I, I have two emotions. One is I'm super stoked because now I have a clear roadmap. Yeah. You know, in terms of, okay, am I really progressing or not? Right. Yeah. That's one. I think two is it's a little overwhelming because I'm like, Am I just like analysis, you know, paralysis by analysis kind of thing? Yeah. But I'm super excited that I'm working with you because it's like now we can focus on what is the next, like what's the path to improvement, right? Like, yeah. How do I get better for the rest of my life? So I'm more excited about the future than anything else. Amazing. But overall, just I think I think it's a great investment, man. It's such an eye-opening thing for me. And oh I'm, yeah, and I I think a lot of times um, it just gives trust like it's like okay like i do this feel and then this happens oh that's what i want to see happen or you know like say we're exaggerating something and we're trying to move numbers a certain way i always say like we're trying to use the numbers as feedback like they're they're just reminding us hey i'm on the right path with what i'm doing um, totally and then also if you go out there one day and it's like wow this is way different than my norm then it's yeah. like you catch stuff a little bit sooner versus like just going down a road for a little while. So completely. It, uh, yeah. And I think it's also the ability to be, I'd rather practice 20 minutes every day or 30 minutes every day for a week, like seven days yeah. a week or six days a week yeah. than doing two hours session once a week on the weekend. You yeah. Know? And that just gives me the flexibility right now is just, you know, the motor pad and the stuff we were working oh, on. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, so it's, it's, just, it's, uh, it's yeah. I'm excited for you. That's awesome. Yeah, I saw the you. swing, saw the data. Um, okay. it will be interesting. I, I, I want to see a couple first today and then, um, uh, sort of see what stands out. I, I saw a couple things that I think we're going to address, but, um, what's it been like on the golf course? So I haven't gone a whole lot on the golf course. I will say that I am back to, it's actually, I would even term it as like mini slices more than anything. Okay. And I think part of it was just the working here without this was just yeah. like, I just didn't even know it was just motor pattern without yeah. knowing where the club and face is. Um, so I haven't, I haven't actually played in two weeks, but before that, um, I think when I look at, so, so a couple of things, one is when I just look at pure numbers, like I mentioned in my email, yeah. the carry numbers on the course are, are way higher than what I get here. Yeah. I don't know if it's still initially kind of me getting used to this and, you know, just the, I want to get those numbers kind of an approach and hit the ball that's happening right now versus on this on the course I'm just literally focused on the process of what do I need to get done to get the swing going so that's number one where I saw a big disconnect in terms of you know the the irons I used on you know the distances I shoot in the course versus what I'm getting here that's number one I think number two um, about two weeks ago when I went again working on the same stuff as you had told me to saw a marked improvement in my iron game like yeah. you know solid contact good solid distances even higher than usually what i you know um end up getting yeah but again the, the ball flight was a little uncontrollable at times it'd be dead straight sometimes mini draw but a lot of times it'll be fading so yeah I think I, I don't have an understanding of, you know, what do I need to get done to be consistent from a club face perspective to get the right flight. Again, I'm ambivalent, whether it's dead straight draw or, or slice. Yeah. I think I just want to work with the swing that I have. What's the best way that I don't naturally change that. And I'm okay with the ball flight again, you know, like that's, that's where it is. So those are, you know, those are the things that I would say are, um, you know, the things that I saw on the course, I think part of the, the challenge is also from maybe a driver perspective, my, you know, like my on the course, my five iron is a 195 um, kind of a club. Um, but my driver is barely like 250, 255. And you might have seen it. I think the spin numbers are just so high. Like, I think it's a lot like my launch angle, you know, yeah, that, that's a, when I looked at the numbers, I was like, based on your club speed, we'd be 270 plus ish. Yeah. So I'm not getting that. No, that's the launch, like, that's the first thing I was, I was like, man, we got to either turn down the loft on that thing until we get the, the uh, delivered loft that we want or Dude, we, it's seven degrees. Yeah. yeah. I'm at a seven degree driver right now. Yeah. So that's, uh, I mean, I don't know if there's a right answer. It, you might be on the extreme end of, 
of loft for a little bit. There's there's a couple of things I see in the swing that we could that will help, but totally. um, you just might be a, a guy that plays a low loft to driver um, for for a bit. But we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Um, just looking through the numbers. So path, it seemed to be well. Let's hit some, and then I'll okay. sort of see what I see as we go. And then, uh, but I, it's good to get these references before. Cool. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, let me know if you can see me, Tyler, or. And when we, when you look at it, is it showing ball flight on your screen, or do you just have the numbers showing up, or how do you look at your data set there? So I have the. The foresight app yeah i don't know yeah so it shows me like you know i haven't hit anything today but it'll it'll list all the data here the ball flight and the club data yeah perfect and then i can see stuff here too awesome yeah. that's great that's great i'll have you probably just yell out the numbers to me or if i need to look at all of it i'll uh, we'll just scroll through it just like that well yeah that's fine i can i can share with you the numbers uh just do you how do we do this because you you want to see the entire swing right from the ball to yeah i mean right right there is fine like i like i'll um it's That's good fine. i can make it work if i need to adjust i'll t i'll tip you down do you can tip it down tip it up sort of idea it's gonna be better better yeah, I'll go. That's fine for now. But you can't see when I get to the top, right? I'll adjust. I'll do a couple at this angle, and then I'll have you tip it up, and I'll do a couple at that angle, too. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Okay, cool. Uh, so, side note swing wise overall massive improvements like on the areas that we've focused on like it's uh it's always fun when i look and say oh wow that's like a lot different than before you know like a lot different oh awesome yeah yeah i i, I think i even feel it like just the you know kind of load into the right side yeah Couple more. Yeah. How was that one? Uh, so that was swing uh, was 85.7. The club was 85.7. Ball was 110, 1.29 smash, 149 carry. What's face the path say? Uh, 4.1 degrees open. Yeah, so that's where, to me, that carry number, why it's showing so, uh, for the ball speed. Uh, what was attack? Uh, attack was 1.9 down. Okay, move the ball position back a little bit and then we'll uh, sort of see what happens. It's probably gonna make the face a bit more open, but let's just do a couple here. Okay. So when you say move the face, uh, move the ball back a little. It just looked like it was more like you're hitting a four iron. It looked a little forward in your stance for- uh... So maybe just a little left of the sternum? Yeah, yeah, just a little. Okay. Just lay a club down and like put it like a T where you know across the alignment stick, just so you can reference where the ball is relative to your stance. Just so we'll yep. use that as a if it, just so you can. I just want to see what it looks like, just in case I'm crisscrossed or something. Cool. Can you can you see this? Yeah. Perfect. I think you'd still move it back a little bit more. Okay. 
There, right there, yeah. Yep, I, I think I hit on the uh, heel there. Yeah, it's okay. Don't change anything. It, it It's um, what I thought would happen because we moved it back and the face was already open at impact, so. The, the, notice the path number is consistently, what was the path there just as a reference? Uh, path was 5.4 open. Uh, f to the right, right fa path? The path was... Uh, just club path alone. Sorry, you're talking, so the club path was 10.5 degrees path into out. Yeah. 15.9 so <laughs> degrees face open to the target. Right. So we have, okay. So we just, so you, so we got club path. Okay. So the center of this club, not the face, right? Not the face where the center of the club is moving. So if the face is over here, it doesn't matter. The, this is the ball. That one was 10 from the in to the out. Okay. You see that? Yeah. Your data set that you sent me was four from the in to the out. Okay. So it was four into out on most of your shots. Yeah. Um, the face to that path was typically open. So the face was a little open to the path. So when you were saying on the course, the tendency was a little bit of a fade, most of, like it, it was a little bit probably of impact point, but also face the path relationship. So the thing that stands out to me when I looked at that, and then when I look at these first ones, we just have to, you're doing a better job with the head position we're going to have to start to get the face to start to square up a little sooner because you load it nice, but we have to start squaring up the face sooner. Um, and then let's see what happens. So we're going to do the same ball position, same idea. We're just going to try to hit a couple that finish a bit left. Okay. Okay. And then we'll see. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We're going to play around with a couple different things today. Got it. So do I just like try move the ball back and just swing or am I doing something else? I would move the ball back and swing and say, I have to hit the left side of the net. Cool. Okay. So you start with your face already slightly closed, right? So like, it, yeah. is that, do you agree that the face yep. starts a little shy? I do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's fine. We, we can, I'm not sold that it has to point straight at the start or anything like that. Let's just see what would it look like if you had it at impact slightly shut? And then show me impact position, hips open, chest open. What's impact? For me, this yeah. seems like impact. Perfect. Now go back like three feet and then just chip it with the shut face. Okay. Do like three of those. I just want your brain to know what it's going to feel like when you come through. Oh. Awkward drill, but um, helpful. Which way did that one go? Left. How? What was the numbers? Did it get it? Uh, actually, let me try again. I, I I don't think I was aiming for the ball to be in the zone. Okay. Uh, this was two point nine degree face close to path. 2.9 face close to path. What was path? 4.7 degrees path into out. Okay, cool. That's so that that's going to show a draw shot shape, correct? Correct. And then um, reference point launch angle. Yep. What was that one? On this one, it was 11 degrees launch. Okay. So that's a bullet, right? So like uh, we're looking for 16 to maybe 18 for you. Um, okay. So, but just in that drill, so now let's build it into like a three quarter swing with the same concepts. And then we're going to work a bit on movement right now. I'm just showing you just that impact, what we're looking for. And then we're going to talk about patterns and stuff like that. Okay. Because with the path four into out, it seemed like pretty consistent. If we get the face to match what we want, which would be around two degrees open, then it would be, as long as we get close to the middle, it's going to be like little push draws that come back to the target. And that's, that looks like a, the easiest way to go about it right now. Okay.
uh, 3.8 degrees close to path, 6.1 degrees path into out with 15.8 degrees launch. Beautiful. That was, that would have been a really nice looking uh, shot. One more from here. Watch that ball position. It looks really off the left heel there. Is that correct? Oh, wow. Here. Okay, that's where it is. Okay, so I'm I'm trying to, is my, am I slightly forward camera wise angle? I can't tell. Yeah, you're, you're bending down a little bit. Okay. Um, I think you're also a little, this might be more square. Let me, me see. So that probably be yeah. more square. Okay. Can you slide me uh, away from the net, like uh, just an inch or two? Perfect. I think that's going to be great now. Let's see that again. Yeah, perfect. Love it. Now it looks, I think what you see and what I see is the same. Yeah, I almost feel like it's almost like just here of my sternum. Yeah, you, you, I'm okay with that ball position. It doesn't look, um, it looks more off sort of left logo from what I'm seeing. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, 18.4 launch, 7.9 in to out, 1.3 degree open to path. Yeah, that's a trouble one because that one's going to be a big push cut, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go again. Don't cheat with ball position. No. Do you think this is okay? It's a little forward for, for what I see. It looks a little forward for me. Okay. Just a little. Yeah. There you go. Better. to path 6.3 into out 17.5 launch it's going to be a big push cut how open was the face 3.8 okay face open to this path. is a setup position on this last one so there's there's ball so if i look real close i think that you started sitting into the uh, left hip a little bit too much like it looks like the pelvis is pretty open there at a dress so this is not a dress uh Tyler, this is me trying to be in that impact position. Oh, okay, got you, got you. Okay, that's fine. Do you want me to start with the? Do you want me to start with the proper uh, setup? No, it's okay. I, I'm okay with where See, that, it is. That's that is the, that is trying to be in the in the impact perfect. position. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. That's the ball position and setup. Oh wow! It seems like to me like I'm literally in the middle of my <laughs> feet. It it looks pretty darn good from there. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that setup looks nice. Um. Yeah. It, the only reason I didn't want it too far forward is I didn't want to encourage you to try to go get it. I'd rather you feel like you got to sort of stay yeah. back. Um, let me see down the line. I need to see one thing. I'm happy with the setup. Okay. All right. Let me know if this works better. Yeah, maybe if I could go a little bit more like body line, just a touch more to uh, towards the house there. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, that's it. One more of those. Oh, wow. 5%. Five, five degrees open to path. Okay. Oh, 
All right, got it. Zero degrees open to path. Seven what was five. path? Zero open to path, 7.5 in throughout, 19.3 launch. So try on this one. It's it's a little, it's gonna be slightly counterintuitive. What was attack angle there, just as a reference for me? Attack was 3.5 down. Okay. I'm debating on which angle I want to go. I'm going to go club first. Okay, show me um, what I would like to do is if this is, if you're coming down, okay, and the ball's right here, put a tee about one foot behind the ball, okay. um, maybe two feet behind the ball, and then we're going to try to have the face square up and get closer to the ground earlier, okay? Right now, we load it a little bit, and it's sort of tracking. To me, it's sort of like it almost wants to go, that way like a little out and then on top and it okay. just looks like it's hard for you to square it i want you to feel like we're almost like casting it a little bit and squaring it a little bit sooner but we okay. can do that with just get a t three you know two to three feet behind the ball and we'll just work on just releasing those angles a little sooner to help you square the face and then um i want to i'm i'm curious to see what your body does when we do that so there's the ball. I don't think this is three feet. Yeah, just close to the edge is fine. Yeah, that's fine. And then put the T so it's uh, pointed sort of at your stick there. So it's like a square. You'd have to square the face at that back T. So uh, whatever we want the face angle, that's what, there you go, perfect. Yes, and then move it one inch towards the stick that's on the ground. Yes, perfect. Okay, so it's almost the target line, right? Like it's touching the target line. Close, yeah, exactly. Got it. Cool. Do I go half swing or full swing? We'll do a couple half ones. Just show me a demo first of what it's going to look like so I can just make sure. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do. Yeah. Slowly let the angles out. Perfect. Let them out and then have the face. So I would want the club, uh, move that T one more inch towards you. Same drill. Yes. Yeah. And then just chip one, like you can do a full swing, but I'm talking like 30 miles an hour, like no effort. Ah, shoot. I just missed it. One more. Yeah. Yes. Just do as well as you can to match that. A little too fast, but right idea. 1.3 open, 10.9 into out. Yeah, that will change. I, the, so we got a couple of things. I'm trying to widen the arc of the downswing to give yourself more time to square the face. Okay. So show me one, no, like you go to the top and then feel like you let go of all your wrist angles. Yeah, and then now it's turn from there. Good. What did the face say there? Uh, 2.9 degrees close to path. Beautiful. That's the DNA that I'm trying to get a little more of. So just because I, we've worked together, I know your sort of pattern of like your body has that in it. If I can get you to start feeling like you're keeping this wider here, that will also help the chest. 
And that will also think about how the club's got to travel, right? If I do this, it's already moving really towards the ball. If I do this, it's now it's actually going away and down. So I have a lot more time to get the face to square up. Very counterintuitive. Um, and I promise you, when we look at it in slow-mo, it's still going to be loaded. Like, it's not like it's not going to be loaded. It just, yeah. now it's not overloaded and the hands are moving away instead of towards so much. Got it. Okay. And that's sort of part one. I have a part two, but I need to see this a couple more times. So, yeah. So just so I understand correctly, I think I get a little confused when I get to the top, what do I do, right? So what you're yeah. saying, when I get to the top, what I'm doing is this. That's right? what we want. Correct. Okay. Like you're going to throw the club back behind you almost. So that was not early enough yeah. with the throw part. Yeah. So do it, do it. Um, do you have an alignment stick there, an extra one? Yep. Gra just grab it. I'm going to show you an exaggerated sense just to push you a little bit. Yeah. Go to the top. Okay. Uh, with the alignment stick, we're actually going to use the stick and swing it like a club. I'm going to show you. And then make it, I, I'll just show you this. So I'll stand up so you can see me. So if I just flip the club upside down, so I'm going to go up. And I'm trying to make it, make a noise, but stop it by my leg. So I'm going here and I'm trying to make a noise, but stop it by my back leg. Yes. Okay, and then watch what my knees do when I do it, ready? Yes, yes, there we go. This is my two-parter. Couple more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Let your chest turn a little as you do it. Like it can turn to the target as you do that move. Yeah, one more, good. Good, and you can let, let me just picture my arms here. You can let your right arm start to extend a little bit. It doesn't have to stay too tight. It's gonna go this way a little. Does that make sense? So it Got doesn't it. have to stay tight in here. You can feel like it's like that and you're going flex. So when you do it, your hands finish just above your right knee. Ooh, that fires up the right glute pretty good. There, perfect. Yes. Yes, about four more. I got to video it because it's so good. Good, four more. A little more knees. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Good job, man. You can take a minute. That, that's not the easiest drill in the world. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you there's about, and this is where the numbers point us in the right direction and then yeah. I show you the movement to get the numbers that we want. So I'm going to give you, a, I got a couple different visuals here for you. And it's the thing that stood out to me the most, but I wasn't sure how I wanted to go about it until I started to watch you hit today. Yeah. Um, I'm going to show you a couple things here from an, because it, it, it just it just showed it more once you did a couple of demos. I'm going to use your down the line. I'll just use your down the line iron swing that you sent me from the other day. Okay. All right. So we got a couple things here. So we have. Okay, this is the iron swing from the other day, and then I'll paint this picture back to the ball. Okay, so you so we're reverse engineering it a little bit. So. Okay, that's the downswing the other day. So if I look at, let's see if it lets me. Oop. So if I look at this, okay, check the right leg as you transition. Yep. It goes into a very straight position. Typically, that means that you're pushing vertically off your back leg early. So you go 
and it pushes actually straight as you start down, okay? Which makes this narrow and, and pull everything in a little bit, which gives you less time to square the face, okay? So okay. that we're going, okay, what's gonna give us time to square the face? That's what I'm thinking, okay? Okay. This is the demo you just did. Oh, wow. So we've, whoa, whoa, whoa. we've added a massive amount though. So our chest stays down, our width, look at the arm position, right? So it's yeah. really wide, hands are a little bit lower. We've added that right knee flex. Here's one of Dustin in transition. Check the right knee. Yeah. Right. So, and then this was what the right leg used to be and with the yep. hand still up, right? So he's got more knee flex. This is our demo, which is so cool. And yeah. then that arm position looks good. It also, there's a lot of things that happen with, so you know how your pass consistently into out? Yeah. So it's into out because the arc on this side is small. So then when I come through it, so it's small to extend it out this way. So that yep. shoots the path into out. Well, now what we're doing is we're going wider on this side with flex. So then when I start to push and turn, then I'm gonna match it on this side versus right now, sort of narrow on this side, thrown out on that side. So that's where a little mismatch happens from the, like the, how the, the arc of the swing and what's happening through the ball. So there's lots of ways to do it, but I think for you, if we can get you using that right side, I feel like you do a way better job in the backswing using it. Now, can we, and you're not doing this as hard. So now it's just the next step is getting that club to feel out here with flex and then we can drive off of it and hit it. That's what sort of I'm thinking. And then we'll see. Does that okay. make sense? That makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. So what you're saying is essentially what I used to do was, you know, yeah, you would go right into like that back leg would just fire. So all your pressure, if I videoed it, yep. it like if you're on a pressure plate, your pressure would spike on the back leg, but your chest would look forward. We're actually yeah. trying to do the opposite. We want to feel like the pressure stays on the back leg a little bit longer. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. And that will produce a couple different things. Um, let's see if I got a, here's a, here's Rose. So watch the, oh, again, Rose is amazing, man. His watch, face great. Oh yeah. So pure. Watch the transition. Yeah. Right. Totally. So yeah, we go in, he goes into, that flex position with the right knee, right? And everything's there. And then that Boom. actually looks, if I sort of freeze this one, right? Yeah. And then we go to totally. your, de your demo, it's actually going to be pretty similar, I think. Yeah. That same point. So here is um, your sort of exaggerated demo. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Very similar. So that we're getting into that. And if I go, I'll pull up the iron swing from the one that you sent, just so you could see. And this is what stood out the most. And I just wasn't sure how it was going to all fit together. But then once I saw the numbers, I, I saw it. So if I freeze it at the same spot, and I zoom in a little. So you'll see a, a different visual. So there's yep. what you sent, right? So we see how early that happens. Yeah. This is what we just did. And then there's our rows, right? So I think our, you see the difference in those looks? Yeah. Okay. I do. And it's, it, it all relates, right? Everything's sort of doing everything. But I think if we can start to train you to get the force going that way with flex, then drive up, I think the upside's pretty high. So let's do a couple more. Let's go with the club now that you have the sense of the stick feel, okay? Yeah. Okay, let's go. We'll st I'll stay right here and we're going to go seven iron, same stuff. <clears throat> Perfect. Yeah. And then say from there, if you just let the club totally like you're going to throw it at the net, what would happen? 
Yeah, good. We have to just keep letting it swing. That's yeah. going to be a new sense. It's like, let it keep going, you know, yeah. like no restriction. Okay. Yeah. Let's do one more of those demos. Beautiful. Nice, man. That was great. One more. <clears throat> Good, and you can feel like you're actually hitting more from the inside of the ball. Even though the path tended to be into out, I, I need a little more inside of the ball feel. One more. Okay. Almost like you're sweeping and, and um, yeah, like no attack angle feel. So it's wide, we add the flex. Yeah, now sweep it through. Yeah. There you go, good. Let's hit one. I'm good with it. Uh, whatever effort you want, I'd be okay with a smooth one, but, or you could demo it once, then hit it. Either one's fine. Okay. Yeah, let me go, let me go slow. I think it's the transition I have to be like, what yeah. do I need to get done? So. Yeah, and I'll just show you, this is your demo transition so you can see. So basically, yeah. if we do that, our odds are pretty high that you're going to hit a good shot, you know? So, and then it's going to be trusting from there that you can just, you know, let everything just sort of go. You don't have to try to, you know, do anything like that. It's just going to be total letting it out, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, feel a little more draw, a little more draw. There you go, good. Yes, and then sweep it. Right idea, let's see how we did. I videoed it too. Numbers? Uh, 1.5 close to path, uh, 6.7 path into out, 3.9 down and 20.1. On launch. Nice. So that would have been a little tiny draw, right? If it was hit in the middle. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And then it's we just didn't quite add as much flex in the knees as I'd like, but it was I still. Or I just I, it was too fast from the top, Tyler. Correct. Yeah. You need to buy yourself time by like you know we go we start here, lose a little, get it back. You know, basically yeah. is is your focus with the width yeah one more time more draw more throw the club towards the back of the mat back right back back behind your back foot there you go that's it yes there you go that looks that would be ideal Close. You create a lot of force through the handle. I want you to keep feeling like it's throwing this way, like back behind you. I'm still pulling it, right? A little this way. Yeah, I'm trying to get it to go that way a little more. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, okay. Good. Do that three more times. Good. Hang on one sec. Yeah, I'll, you might have to feel like you're, you, you keep your lower body like almost going, like you like to go this way pretty quick. So it's almost like you're going to delay that and just feel like you just sit without too much rotation. Okay. Okay. I, I'm just trying to sync it up a little bit. And I'm trying to do it 
is is l- the least intrusive way possible. So let's just see a couple more. Good. Throw it more at the right side of the net still. When you said throw more is like the, the wrist angles going. Yes. Yeah. And like that. Yes. Like try to imagine, like if I do it, like it's not going to get all the way there, but if I like try to throw it back this way, yeah. then try to turn, that's almost your segments. Like it's throw, then turn. I don't, it's opposite. It's not what actually is going to happen, but for you, that's what you need to do right now. It's like, you could do it and say, you could actually do this like this, just like this. You go here, throw it. Like, look where it is. It's way back here, right? Yeah. And then turn and chip it. Okay. Like, do it in two pieces. Throw it first, let it all out, and then just chip it. Let it all out, stop. Yeah, let it out, stop, now hit it. Good job. I'm sure that felt out of body, but... You did a good job there. Yeah. You so, want to see it? Look what it does. Watch how cool this is. I think it's so interesting. Okay, so we go. We go up. So here's the top. Good. So yeah. like still, I, I really like what you're doing here. Awesome. This is your throw move, right? Yeah. And then watch what happens when you go look at the knees. Beautiful. Yeah. And then, then you go into rotation, right? So then we see, uh, I, to me, if I freeze right there, yeah, I think we're in a pretty good spot, you know? Yeah, so it's, it's, it, I know it's, uh, there, some of the ideas are probably way different than your brain I thought about before, but it gets you into a really nice position close to the ball so that's obviously a good time to be in a good position um, yeah i also feel like uh i have a warped sense of where the speed comes from yeah and 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 i think it's it's recalibrating my understanding of where speed comes from right so that was before right and you could see see the club still it's it's pretty loaded and up there right yeah now it's starting to get out see where it's almost in your hands there, just yeah. trailing okay before that's the demo sort of in the hands, just trailing Yeah. throws in the hands, just trailing. Right. So this was the club was really uh, to me, it just was going to take a lot of like, you would have to go bam, like this, yeah. just really hard to catch it back up where now we're it's in a better time. You know, the things are moving at the right time versus like you having to really, really do something special close to the ball. Okay. Is there an element of at the top almost, I feel like my, this angle is increasing. Yeah. Right. So it's like, yeah, it's like if I was going to take the club and I go like this and like throw it that way, that's sort of what it's going like that. And then because I'm rotating, it doesn't really look like it's extending much, but we're trying to take out that motion, you know, for you, we're trying to go that way a little bit more. Like it's, I'm trying to reach, back towards the computer versus down towards the ball. Got it. Okay. Okay. Let it all go. Beautiful. Yeah. And then just chip it. Yeah. Saying, do it in two pieces, let it out, and then chip. Yeah, right idea. So it had a little bit too much downward yeah. movement, right? But trusting you can go here and then just turn without trying to hit it, I think, or hit down on it, I think is a good sense. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll show you something which... Just want to get your thoughts on does this look okay or not? Right idea. Still looks a little that way versus that way. Um, a little, a little. Yeah. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Because I know that every time at the top I stop 
in transition, I am trying to like, this is what I'm trying to do. Yeah, we want to go throw it away and then chip it. Nice job, beautiful. One more? Yeah, I'm just thinking if um, a couple other drills, but I, I like this. I think you're on the right track. Show me in two pieces again, exaggerate the knee flex as you throw it out. Yes, now Chip. Beautiful, nice job, man. Yeah, so it's both, it's both the throwing at the back and the knee flex have to come together. Yes, right? yeah, like that's, this is where you got to on that one. So I, I like, you know, the body position there. You look yeah. much more comfortable. Yeah. That's a pretty nice, you know, like really nice from here to here. Yeah. Super simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's and not then, a whole lot of manipulation going on. No, and then we'll be able to sync up a couple other things once we get this yeah. tied in, like just knee flex in there, knee flex in there, and then and then go through. Let's do two more, and then I'm going to see the front, and then we're going to uh, talk about sort of numbers that we're going to be looking at as we do cool. these, okay? Cool, cool, cool. Close, didn't have the knee flex there. Okay. Yes. Beautiful, man. <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. It your your body doesn't know what to do yet through the yeah. ball, but watch this first move down. Ready? Oh yeah, that's not that bad. No, it's very good. Yeah, like unbelievable, actually. You know, like the knee. You're starting to flex it a little bit, and the more we get like that right hip to sit down in that first move as you do that the better but that was pretty sweet right there look at that and then it's yeah, yeah, kicking, yeah. kicking it's kicking and then it goes it's yeah. just you're you're not sure what to do from here to here but we'll get there it's just I agree. so yeah. the idea is as you go here this sits down it doesn't shoot up like that right it's going to stay for you we don't need so if i start here that's forward bend of the pelvis okay and then i go here now that little left bend of the pelvis, right? My left hip is higher than my right, okay? Yeah. If I go left bend into straightening right le my right leg, then I go into more left bend, you see that? So then my yeah. right hip gets really high. For you, it's, we want left bend and just add a little flex so we have, like it's, it's for you, you almost could feel like it's gonna go that way. So the right yeah. hip gets lower than the left, but it will never, for, like I just don't see that happening for you, but the idea, you go here and then this is sitting down yeah. and then I flex that and then I can push out of that. That would be, that's sort of the, what we're going towards. Okay. Cool. Big energy system there. Right. Cause then we can use the legs better versus you produce a lot of energy, just sort of hands and arms yeah. without much through the ground. So now we're going to be in the ground, pushing out of the ground, way different energy system. Cool. Yeah. Makes sense. sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, one Thank more you. from here and then I'm going to go to the front. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Just as good as it needs to be. Nice. 
numbers. I'm still going fast with uh, 12.4 into out. Oh, no, 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 wait. Okay. 10.2 into out, 2.5 face close to the path, 4.9, 4.5 down, 19.1 launch. Awesome. That's cool. There's a lot of good going on. That uh, path number will adjust as we, because I look at this, it doesn't look that into out, like when I look at where the frame is. So it just maybe we, well, I just would make sure that the system is calibrated because I look right here and my guess is five into out, maybe six, and it's reading 10. So, you know, I don't know, it, like, there's a chance that it, it is reading 10, but when I look at that, it doesn't look like 10 from what I'm used to seeing. Okay. So just check it just to make sure. I mean, it could be 10, um, but it just doesn't look like it to me. Cool. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, face on. Yeah, I'll just move this. Can you see okay, Tyler? Yeah, perfect. Nice. How was that one? Uh, 1.8 face close to path, 10.8 into out again. That's okay. Uh, we'll, 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 the end out will be able to adjust. I'm not worried about that. That will be dictated by pivot and some other things, but we got to, let's do that one more time. A little narrow on that one. Little what? A little narrow. You didn't throw that one out. Okay. Let me just see what it is. Yeah, 1.9 face close to path, 9.3 into out, 4.9 down, 20.1 up. Yeah, for you, you can almost go, if I was going to exaggerate it, I would go here, both arms straight, no wrist set, turn through. That would be the exaggeration that I would want to see if I was pushing, if I was like, Hey, I really want to push the pattern. That's where I'd be going with it. Okay. So show me the top, both arms straight, total release of the club there. Now turn and hit it. Good. That's where th th we got to do that. Like five times. That was so good. I got a video of that. Any numbers there? Uh, 6.5 into out, 3.1 close to path, 4.2 down, 17 launch. So ideal. isn't that wild that you went arm straight, no wrist, and you're still four down? Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. Okay. That was like my favorite one actually of the day. Like movement wise, it was like what I need to see more of. Same thing, up to the top, arm straight, club released. Yeah, turn. So good. So this is 2.8 down. Oh, it's still 10 into out. That's just, you're not used to turning your chest the way that you're gonna turn it. So like when you get to here, 
which is like super cool. Basically from there, you're going to be able to let your left hip and left side move way more through it. Okay. So like this one, it sort of was a little hesitant on the through, but so if I freeze, I'll show you one other thing that happens when you go to turn. Oh, I still go a little forward, right? Yes, a little bit, but if I can get, let me just put this right frame up here. So see how the shaft is parallel to the ground with the hands on the outside of the trail leg. That is a yeah. really good sign that we're in the right amount of load through the wrists. Okay. There's lots of ways to do that. Um, but that is a great sign that we're in the right amount of like you, you haven't overloaded them anymore. And now we're starting to pivot. Let me just freeze it right here so I can show you So that. And then I'll show you this frame. So there is, I'll do, I'll show, uh, I'll do rows again, actually from the front so you can see. Oh, it's not an exact frame. He's one, this is one frame sooner than yours, okay. but it's like, he's, that's one frame and then it goes, yeah. it's like letting out to there. You see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, yeah. So that's what yours is doing there. And then you'll see his lead side continue to move through. Yeah. You're not used to being able to let your left shoulder move like that. So I'm almost giving you a little bit more than I'd like, but you can work on it. So we got, this is the steps. Let out. And then from here, left hip moves back, left shoulder moves back. That will change the path, okay? It. But it's not changing the path by doing this anymore. You used to go like that, right? Where now we're going there and then left shoulder and left hip move. And the harder they move around, the less in to out you're going to see the path. So uh, numbers wise, we're going four down, four into out, okay. face to path at minus two around is the goal. Um, that would put face angle at two degrees open. Okay. okay. So the path at four, face at two. So face the path is minus two. Okay. That is a draw. Um, those are really the numbers that we'll look for. Like obviously launch, the launch is going to plummet with what you're doing. If you do this and you pivot like that, you're just lasers. Like you'll hit them so much flatter. Okay. Um, but that is the movement that I want you to work on and try to get those numbers within that movement. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah. So if I understand you correctly, you're saying even as I'm practicing on the quad, what I need to look for is I need to have a four degrees into out. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, the, the face should be closed by maybe two degrees. Yeah. Right. Um, angle of attack at about four degrees down with a seven iron. Yeah. Yeah, I would say two, minus two to minus six is, I would say for the drills is going to be fine. You know, a little so bit. Like two to six down. By minus, you mean down, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. two to six down. Yeah. Um, and then launch angle will automatically adjust. But it, will, it will just react. I don't think you're going to have to think about it, but yeah. we're, we're going to be in the, you know, seven iron, say 16 to 20. We'll make it a Got wide it. range, but we'll we'll start narrowing those ranges eventually, but thrilled with how that movement was. I wasn't sure what, like when I saw the swings, I knew what I wanted to see more of. Yeah. But when I had the numbers and then the swings and then you demoing it, it sort of, it made it really clear that it's like, oh, if he does arm straight, no load, then from that position, he can just rotate as hard as he wants without having to like try to unload the wrist. Manipulate. Like, super okay. nice, man. Awesome. So, awesome. So um, in terms of practice, Tyler, should I just stick with the seven iron until I get my seven iron full swing? Or are you like, you can do this drill with a driver. It's fine. It just, okay. the, the numbers are going to be low spin and it'll just it'll look like it doesn't carry far, but that's okay for now. I'm not um, looking for carry anyways. I think where I'm coming from is I can put my head down for the next one to two weeks, just practicing this, getting rid of my old, you know, transition. Yeah. Move that I, have. I think practice timing wise, you know, if you're going to practice say it's a 30 minute session, it would be the first 10 minutes, good ball position, 
up to the top, let it all go, and then just tap it into the net. Like literally like okay. 15 feet, like or 20 okay. feet, 30 feet, like not smashing. Let it go, turn through. Just getting used to how the width of the swing feels. Then okay. I would go the same drill, pick up the speed, try to start to pay attention to the numbers a little bit. If you see the path way into out, then keep the width, start pivoting a little bit more aggressive. Okay. Um, if you see the face open, try to keep the width, but square the face, you know, then you can sort of play around with those two pieces. Okay. Then I would go up to the top without a pause and try to still match the same thing. But again, 20 feet, like soft, soft for five minutes, then start to see if you could go at, I don't know, 60 miles an hour probably would be it. And okay. then you could play around with one or two normal speeds at the end. Um, and then you can just video one to see, okay, here's my demo. Here's my, uh, like soft one. And then here's my full one. How okay. close are those to the pictures that I send in the app? Got it. Cool. And okay. then would you, would you say that I, I, I should video even the first 10 minutes, like keep, like keep getting feedback, right? Or is the, I, I, would. I mean, I don't think you gotta look at everyone. I would do like five minutes and check, take two videos and then do another five minutes and take two videos you know are you a fan of like should i mix up my club seven four driver and practice doesn't matter. It? Or i, are I you don't like... think it matters you know okay. i think it's a more of a movement thing for you right now yeah um i'm not opposed to you doing it you, you can definitely change clubs i think the seven and wedge and stuff like that is probably going to be a little easier to pattern yeah. stuff with that so okay all right cool sounds good Awesome, man. Awesome. Have, Great, uh, man. Have... That was fun. I'll send you this um, yeah. Zoom so you have all of what we went through, but you yes, did great yeah. today. And then obviously I'll put the stuff in the Golf Coach app for you. Yeah, appreciate it, man, as always. So let yeah, me just put that down for the next couple of weeks and then we get back again. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I uh, I see some big upside. So we'll just, uh, I, I there's already a lot of things that you've improved now. I think tying this stuff in, I think foundationally is just going to be a bit stronger too. I agree. And I think that's what I wanted to get to, right? Yeah. Just like play solid well, golf. Think, yeah, yeah, you'll be using your legs, you know, that will be a new thing. And that's literally my source of power. I'm going to start working out to like the upper body stuff. Yeah. Um, and like, I might look at the vault and everything, but. Uh, yeah, do you do, do, you timing, do the vault app now or no? I don't. I yeah, don't. just, I, that's my, uh, it's awesome because they have like a whole range of like body weight or bands yeah. or you know, free weights or uh, barbell, like they have a whole different program for each. Yeah. But if you do it, uh, make sure, do Tyler 25, then you get 25% off. Cool. So it's, cool. uh, it's awesome. I, I did one yesterday, man. Every, like they have a couple new ones that I've been, I've been doing and it's, uh, it's really good. They'll, 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 they'll make, they're, some of them are really hard. So yeah, I'm sure dude. Yeah.